Hello, um, this video will cover the case study that will um, <clears throat> that we will work on throughout the quarter. This is the same case study that you probably um, used for system analysis and design one and it continues with us as we uh, go through the different uh, parts of the project life cycle. It was important that we have one project so that you can, you're able to connect as we move from one iteration to the other as we move from one uh, discipline or activity and the other um, and, and this is basically mean as we progress from one chapter uh, to the other in our uh, textbook so there are two case studies in the book and the first one will be the subject of all the projects that we have in this class and the second one is the subject of all the extra credit assignments in this class and you can review the syllabus to see when do we need the extra credit or not. So I wanted to spend a few minutes to review with you what this assignment is about and make sure that we have a good understanding and um, if you have any issues or questions uh, please um, ask the question on Blackboard or send me an email. So this case is uh, called the next generation point of sale system and uh, I like this case because I believe everybody here is familiar with point-of-sale system. Uh, anytime you go to one of the stores, whether it's uh, best to buy if you're buying electronic or music, or if you're going to uh, Dick's to buy sports equipment, or Walmart, or Kroger, or Biggs, or Meyer, any of those, once you stand in the checkout, the process uh, of uh, you giving the cashier the items, and the cashier charging you money, you pay the money, you take the item, all of this is managed by a point of sale system. So I'm hoping that uh, this will be a system that every single one of you is familiar with. Uh, maybe even some of you have worked as a cashier when you were in high school, or uh, so you may have an, an, an inside information on how point of sale system work or what it should uh, deliver. So let's, um, what, what you see in front of you in uh, section 3.3 .3 of the textbook is basically what your client will come to you and tell you. So this is not a problem statement. This is, um, let's say you're playing golf and uh, you're a big shot IT professional and playing next to you uh, a big shot businessman who come to you and say, hey, I have all of these uh, stores and I would like to have a point of sale system so you both of you chat a little bit at what what is really he looking for the result of this chat is what you see in front of you then you take this uh, your notes as you had the conversation you go to your uh, IT team and say here here is your project I need this in five months or six months and then they start working on it so in this case it is you uh, you guys are the IT team and um, uh, we're giving you this problem and you have 10 weeks uh, which is the duration of the winter quarter and uh, you need to give me back I'm not going to say the point of sale system but we having those 10 weeks to do the uh, analysis and the design of this system so we're going to be uh, doing 4 iterations uh, the inception and the 3 uh, uh, elaboration uh, phase iterations. So the, the point of sale system <clears throat> that we're looking for is the uh, is a is is a system to record sales and to handle payment. Uh, we are looking to use it in a retail store. Uh, we want the system to include uh, some hardware component and software. Now, here is some important information. Uh, it interface with various service application. What does it mean? A third-party tax calculator. Uh, wh wh why is this? If you are a national retailer um, and you operate a store in every county, every city, or in many counties, cities, and states, you have uh, all sorts and types of taxes and percentages and so on, and they do change. Uh, every few years. So this is a, a heavy uh, piece and what we're saying here that this retailer decided that they're not gonna worry about taxes, they're just gonna hire a third party 
that provide to them a system to calculate the taxes. So your point of sale system need to be able to interface with this uh, third party tax calculator. Um, and the inventory control, the inventory control is the system that uh, controls the inventory and your point of sale system, point of sale system records the sale and handles the payment, it is not inventory. Uh, there is a whole source of things that happen with the inventory that has nothing to do with point of sale. Uh, for instance, uh, expiration date, uh, how many inventory you have, uh, where the inventory is coming from, the manufacturer, and so on and so forth. So there is an inventory system, but of course the tax, cal the point of sale system has to interface with the inventory system to handle quantity, figure out uh, sale, figure out uh, prices, discounts, coupons, and all of that, uh, these kinds of things. System need to be fault tolerant. What does this mean? Uh, it means that if uh, the internet, which is usually uh, provided by a third party, uh, if, if there's a problem, uh, if it's slow, if it's down, uh, and there's a customer standing in the check-in lane, uh, they need to be able to still uh, make the sale. Uh, <clears throat> so the system uh, need, even if remote services are unavailable, uh, they still must be able be capable to capture the sale and handle at least the cash payments. Now, there are different types of payments as well, which is uh, like you handle payments in cash, in credit cards, in checks, in food stamps, and and uh, in gift cards and, and so many different things. So you have usually a third party payment system and you need to interface with that too. Uh, it must support uh, valid client side terminals and interfaces. What does this mean is um, the retail store will have at the check out lanes, um, it will have uh, some lanes that are managed by a person, by a cashier, uh, and it will have uh, self-checkout lanes. Um, now, both of them will perform exactly the same function. You can't go to the self-checkout and you can't process a coupon. Uh, whatever you can do in the cashier, you must also be able to do in the self-checkout. But there's a, the interface has to be different because the cashier is a person that you can train but the self check is, is out is a customer, and you can't really train the customer. So it had the, the interface, and and hopefully you have an understanding of it between what's the interface is what the customer see, and what goes behind the interface is the actual calculation of the business process, and that that the customer doesn't see that. There's also this retailer um, and projects at the time, and of course now. Uh, that the uh, they want to also allow the customer to buy online, uh, so a customer can go online and can order something, and maybe uh, order and pay, and then walk to the store pick it up, or order and pay, and people from the store then ship it uh, to the customer. The customer can do that through a web browser, which is a third type of an interface. Uh, regular computer with something like a uh, swing graphical user interface, meaning that something on the desktop, an application that you can download on the desktop, uh, touch screen input, uh, wireless uh, phone or a smartphone, and so on and so forth. Uh, in addition, the point of sale system can work with uh, need to be uh, working with different uh, client. Uh, what do I mean? Well, different retailers. So uh, every retailer has a different uh, type. Every retailer has a different type of uh, uh, business rules. So uh, if you go to an electronic retailer like Best Buy or a grocery retailer like Kroger, both of them are retailers, both the point of sale system on both companies look exactly the same, exactly, not exactly, does the same thing. Uh, there are products, it records the sale of products and it handles payments. Uh, however, there are business rules that are different between each retailer. So for instance, uh, in a retailer like Best Buy, if you buy an electronic, uh, we can sell you a warranty. 
So the point of sale system need to present to the user uh, a warranty for uh, something like Kroger. Uh, if you're buying tobacco, you need to show an ID. So the uh, point of sale system need to uh, inform the cashier to uh, enter ID information before a sale is uh, completed. Uh, these things are called the business rules. And business rules uh, can come from the law. It can come from the company itself, the business practice of the company. It can come from so many different areas. And business rules uh, do change. So the point of sale system need to allow for different types of business rules as well. So each client, which is each retailer, Kroger, uh, Best Buy, Walmart, uh, will desire a unique set of logic to execute at certain predictable points in the scenario of using the system, such as when the sale is initiated, when the li line item is added. So we need a point. So you are a company that you will, will make a point of sale system, and you don't want to make a whole new system every time you get a different type of uh, client. You want to make one system that you can configure for different types of clients uh, and so on. So uh, using iterative strategy, let's go ahead and analyze this problem and design that system. And that's what we will do over the next 30 chapters of this book and the five different uh, phases. Uh, again, we're not going to write the code, although it will be very exciting. And maybe when we teach this class in semester, uh, we will have an opportunity to really close an entire cycle. Uh, but you do that in senior project. Those of you in the IT program, in the senior design project, you close the cycle. You start from inception, go through all the different phases of the project development life cycle and complete with the uh, deployment, which happens at Tech Expo, but that's to a different uh, phase. Um, that's all what I wanted to cover here. Thank you, and I'll talk to you in a different uh, video.